Congratulations on being proactive and getting yourself better. I'm very excited to help guide you in this journey towards less pain, feeling better, and a higher quality of life. This introductory video is going to explain a foundational knowledge about how this course works, how to get the most out of it, and what you need to know about your condition before you start taking action. In this module, you will meet your instructor, me, Dr. Kane. We will go over the table of contents, all the different modules and what they cover within this online course. We'll discuss what causes neuropathy, how to track your progress, where to submit questions, and how to effectively apply what you learn. Let's start off by meeting me, your instructor, Dr. Stephen Kane. I'm the owner of NeuroSolutions. This is a company dedicated to helping people with their peripheral neuropathy. I'm the president of the Whole Brain Health Initiative. This is a nonprofit organization that helps older adults adopt a brain healthy lifestyle as a preventative measure against Alzheimer's. Now, so you know, the things that are great for the nerves in your feet that will help you with your diabetic neuropathy are extremely analogous to the things that are highly beneficial for your brain. Consider this, they're starting to call Alzheimer's disease type three diabetes because diabetics are so much more likely to go on and develop Alzheimer's. So what you learn throughout the course will help you with your diabetic neuropathy, plus it will help you keep your brain sharp and allow you to remember the people and the experiences that matter most to you. As a doctor of chiropractic, I've been helping people manage their chronic pain for about 10 years now. Also, when I started chiropractic school, I enrolled in a program called Functional Neurology. This is essentially natural ways to make the best of the human nervous system, and I've continued with these studies ever since. I've traveled across the country training with various neuropathy specialists. I've done thousands of hours of my own independent research into this field. I'm an ACE certified health coach. Now, throughout this course, you are going to notice that I put a lot of tips and strategies in as to how you can implement these new lifestyles into your life. And this is the biggest challenge that most people have and why this health coaching certification has been so valuable in enabling me to help people actually follow through with doing the things that get them better. I got my bachelor's of science from the University of Michigan. Go blue! Okay, table of contents for this course. The first module is the introduction which is what you're watching right now. This module will give you the foundational knowledge that you need so that you can navigate this journey intelligently. The second module is on nutrition, where you will learn about what diet you need to be eating, which supplements will be best for you, and how to make it suitable for your lifestyle. The third module is on exercise, where you will learn which exercises will be best for you to do and how to do them so that you get the most relief possible. Fourth module will be on therapies, which are the creams, baths, nerve stimulation devices, infrared light therapy, and other forms of therapy you can do comfortably in your own home to help you feel better. The fifth module will be lifestyle. You'll learn about sleep, meditation, and other lifestyle habits that will help with your neuropathy as well as your overall health. Then lastly is the put it all together module. Here you will learn how to bring in all the different elements in a synergistic and sustainable way for you so that you can continue to feel good for the rest of your life. As you can see, this is a very holistic approach to getting you better, quite contrary to the approach most other people are taking. Most of the time people will try just one prescription or one supplement or one type of therapy and hope that that one thing is going to be the cure for their neuropathy. It does not work that way. You need to attack your neuropathy from all different angles, from all different levels. And when you do this, you take this holistic approach that is described in this course, that is when you can expect things to get better. And I'm very much looking forward to helping you along this journey. All right, let's move into what causes neuropathy. The more you understand your condition, the better you can make wise decisions and getting yourself better. So here we will initially discuss diabetic neuropathy, and then later on we'll discuss the other different potential causes of neuropathy. 
and signs that you might need to seek out medical intervention. I'm sure those of you with diabetes all already know that diabetes means you have excess blood sugar circulating through your system. Think of this like little shards of glass that are continually tearing and chipping away at your blood vessels and causing your nerves to degenerate, as you can see in this picture on the right. Now, so you know, regardless of how much degeneration has already set in, I promise you, apply the things that you learn in this course and you will be feeling better. Now, the onset for diabetic neuropathy tends to occur in the longest nerves first. So people will experience symptoms like numbness, burning, tingling, pins and needles, prickling sensations, starting in the toes, working their way up the feet to the ankles, the calves, and then into the fingers and the hands and the forearms. This is called the stocking glove distribution. This tends to be a gradual onset as well, meaning it takes at least several months, if not years, for it to reach the height of the symptoms, for the symptoms to get to where they are today. So if this does not match the presentation of your symptoms, if they got real intense within two months, if they did not occur in the stocking glove distribution, then there's a decent chance that you might have something besides diabetic neuropathy causing your discomfort, and you definitely need to check in with your doctor to find out what is the cause. Because if you don't know the cause of your neuropathy, your hands are tied behind your back and being able to make smart decisions to get yourself better. Now, assuming that you do have diabetes and this is the cause of your neuropathy, then it is absolutely essential for you to monitor your blood sugar because this is the cause of your problem. When you monitor your blood sugar, this enables you to manage your blood sugar. One of the most valuable tests you can get is what's called the A1C test. This gets the average blood sugar for three months leading up to when you take the test. While doing a fasting blood sugar is valuable information, to, it does not convey the average 24-7 environment that your nerves are experiencing, like this A1C test. So ask your primary care doctor if you can get one of these, if you've not already gotten one recently, and if that's too cumbersome or you'd rather just do the test on your own, you can get these test kits to do in the comfort of your own home. You can get two of these tests for somewhere between $30 to $40. I'll leave a link as to where you can purchase these in the resource section of this course. And at the end of this module, I will explain where this resource section is. Much of this course is going to discuss lowering your blood sugar as a way to attack the cause of your neuropathy. Now, this only actually works if your blood sugar or your diabetes is the primary cause of your neuropathy. You can have multiple causes of neuropathy. You could have something else that's completely causing your neuropathy. And if you don't have this information, if you don't know what's actually causing your neuropathy, then you could be wasting a whole bunch of time invested in something that's not actually addressing your cause. So we're going to talk about different potential causes of neuropathy, but do check in with your neurologist and be absolutely sure what is the cause. So one potential cause is medication. Ask your doctor if any of the medications or combinations of different medications you're taking could be causing your neuropathy. Another important conversation to have with your doctor, ask them if you do embark on healthier lifestyle habits, if you exercise more, if you eat healthier, if that would enable them to be okay lowering some of your medication dosages. These do have their time and their place, but they also have toxic side effects on your body. And if you can naturally get yourself to a healthier state, to the point where your doctor is comfortable lowering your medication dosage, this is going to be a really good thing for you. Heavy metal exposure as well can cause neuropathies. So if you have a history of working with heavy metals, be it in a factory, from lead-based paint, or from eating large fish like shark or tuna, you may be at greater risk for heavy metal induced neuropathy. And you'd wanna ask your doctor if you should get a heavy metal panel to see if this is something potentially contributing to your neuropathy. 
Autoimmune conditions can also cause neuropathies. This is where your immune system actually attacks the nerves in your body. If you have rashes, dry skin, thinning hair, these may be signs that you have an autoimmune condition contributing to your neuropathy. So ask your doctor if this is potentially the case, and if so, you might want to ask your doctor if any of these blood tests would help you out. A vitamin D test, CD4 to CD8 ratio, and TH1, TH2 cytokine test. Infections can also cause neuropathy, so if you've ever been diagnosed with Lyme disease, leprosy, HIV or AIDS, hepatitis, this may be contributing to your neuropathy and something you need to discuss with your doctor. Vitamin or mineral deficiencies or excess intake of them can cause neuropathy. If you have not had a blood panel, you should definitely request one of these for all the B vitamins, especially vitamin B12, as this deficiency is the most common cause of neuropathy regarding vitamins or minerals. You should also ask for a methylmalonic acid test. This is a very specific test that will pick up on a deficiency of vitamin B12 before the actual vitamin B12 blood test picks up on it. You could also have a pinched nerve in your body causing a neuropathy. If you notice that symptoms are only felt in specific parts of your body, for example, if you notice your neuropathy is very much on the inside of your foot, but not on the outside of your foot. If it's only on one side of your body, these are signs that it could be a pinched nerve causing your neuropathy. Also, if you have pain in your low back or your neck, this could be a sign as well. So ask your doctor about this, and if this is the case, physical therapy or chiropractic could be something that helps you alleviate this. Genetics can also cause neuropathy. Now these tend to be less common, but there's still definitely something to consider. If you have a high arched foot, as you see in this picture, this is one of the hallmark signs of a genetic neuropathy. It doesn't guarantee that you have it, or if you don't have this high arch, it doesn't guarantee that you don't have genetic neuropathy. It's just one of the signs. And there's plenty of other causes of neuropathy too. There's cancer, alcoholism, the list goes on. And then lastly, if nobody knows what's causing it, they call it idiopathic. Now this can be rather frustrating because if you don't know the cause of your neuropathy, then again, your hands are tied behind your back and you just don't know what to do to actually address the cause. If this is the case, stay relentless, continue asking different specialists, different neurologists to figure out what's causing your neuropathy. I've seen plenty of people before where they finally see their, their fifth or their sixth neurologist and then finally they get the right diagnosis and they figure out what's actually causing it. So if you've not already had these conversations with your neurologist, be sure to have them ASAP and get a clear understanding as to what is causing your neuropathy. All right, now that we've talked about the different causes of neuropathy, let's assume that you've checked in with your doctor and it has been found that diabetes is the primary, if not the exclusive cause of your neuropathy. In this case, it is imperative that you check your feet daily. This can help prevent needing an amputation. The most common cause of people getting amputations in their toes and their feet is because they get an infection. This infection is most commonly caused because of diabetic neuropathy and someone loses the sensation in their feet so they don't know that they stepped on a nail or a piece of glass. Something gets lodged in their foot causes an infection, the infection penetrates the bone, and then the doctors are left with no alternative except to remove the toes or the foot. Again, many of these situations can be avoided if you check your feet daily. If it's tough for you to actually look at your feet, you're not flexible enough, they have mirrors as shown in this picture here that can help you do it if you're not flexible enough to do it on your own. I'll have a link for this in the resource page where you can order one of these mirrors. It is also essential that you see a podiatrist 
on a regular basis. They are specialists in managing your feet. So if anything goes awry, if your toes start to curl up and you get hammer toe, there are surgeries they can do to help relieve this. If there's some sort of compression on a nerve in your feet, there's surgical procedures they can do to help out that. They can remove corns. They can do so many different things to make sure that your feet are healthy and functioning properly, especially getting fitted for the right types of shoes or potentially the right types of inserts for your shoes. See a podiatrist at least a couple times a year. All right, so now you know the importance of getting medical supervision. So let's assume that you have it and now are ready to embark on your journey towards naturally improving on your condition. One thing that you must do to reach optimal results is to track your progress. Proper tracking helps keep you accountable to doing the things you need to do. Plus, over time, you will pick up on the patterns of what is helping you out most. In the resource part of this course, we will have a download for you. The file name is Neuropathy Tracking Template. Here there are several essential variables already plugged in for you to track daily. Plus, you can add more variables if you'd like. Now, as you see here in the right, we have notes and observations. Anytime your pain gets better or it gets worse, write it down and make note of anything you can correlate it with. What time of day? What were you eating? What were you doing? Were you stressed out? Did you not get good sleep? Did you try a new therapy? The more you can pick up on these patterns over time by taking very good notes, the more you will be empowered with the knowledge of what is going to have you feeling better and continue feeling better better. We have already covered a lot of information in this module and we're going to cover a lot more in the future modules. You are surely going to have questions at some point, so now we'll discuss how you can ask your questions. Now what I recommend you do first is posting your questions on the Facebook page. This is a wonderful way to see what other questions people have been asking, things that maybe you wouldn't have thought of to ask but would be good for you to know. This is where you can ask questions that might help, help other people down the line. This is where you can see all sorts of different input from other people pertaining to various topics within this field of diabetic neuropathy. I'll leave a link in the resources to connect you to this Facebook page. I'll answer your questions here, but if you don't feel comfortable being in, in this group on Facebook or you're just not on Facebook and don't want to get on it, you can send me an email at drkane at neuropathypainfree.com. I very much want to see every single one of you successful in overcoming your neuropathy. So do not hesitate to reach out to me if you have any questions about this course or about what you need to do to get yourself better. Now that you know what's entailed in this course, what causes diabetic neuropathy, the different causes of neuropathy besides diabetes, the importance of medical supervision, how to track your progress, and how to submit your questions, we will now get into the most critical part of this module, how to implement what you learn. Just learning and knowing the information, that's the easy part. Putting it into action, this is what takes a lot of energy, time, and can be quite challenging. So let's make sure you do it right. First off, make sure that you are level-headed in this journey. There will probably be ups and downs, but after four months of applying this information, there's a very high probability that you're going to be feeling a lot better. And while I do want you and everyone else to feel relief as soon as possible, the reality is it will probably take at least a month for you to notice significant and consistent improvements. So be level-headed and try to stay calm throughout the process. Secondly, make this journey as enjoyable as possible. There is a lot of compelling data out there showing that intrinsic motivation is much more sustainable than extrinsic. That means that if you do something because it's inherently enjoyable, that you're more likely to continue doing it. Where if you only do these things, if you only eat the better diet or do the new exercises because it's gonna help you with your neuropathy, if that's the only reason that you do it, there's a decent chance that you will relapse, that you will give it up at some point in the future. 
True success is where years, decades down the line, you are still feeling great. And the more you can make this enjoyable or intrinsically motivating, the more likely you are to stick with it and continue reaping these benefits. So everything that you learn throughout this course, take it through the mindset of how can I make this new change or intervention as pleasing as possible. Next up, seek out social support. Reversing diabetes and diabetic neuropathy is not an easy thing to do. The more support you can get from those that care about you, the more you can create new connections with people on the Facebook page that are experiencing the same challenges and going on the same journey, the more likely you will succeed. And lastly, at the end of this module, as well as all the other modules, there will be a checklist for you. Do not advance to the next module until you have accounted for everything on each checklist. Think of this like a recipe. If you miss just one ingredient, you could get a completely different outcome than what you were desiring. Now, along with a checklist is the resource download that you can get. The title for this will be the name of the module and resources. So for this one, it will be introduction resources. This document will have the links to research, additional learning material, and products along with the promotional codes to get you savings on them. Thank you for watching this introduction module. Look forward to seeing you in the next video after you complete your PDF checklist. Have a great one. Thank you.